Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Jesse Blake. Steve, it's currently 1.42. Yes. We were supposed to start recording at 1 o'clock. Well, that's what happens, Jesse, when it's kids' table day. Yay! Kids' table day! So, Adam is off being uh, a dad. Oh, the baby's not born yet. Right. But there are things he has to do, like go to the hospital with his pregnant wife. Yes. So he is going to be unavailable for probably the next two weeks while uh, we give him pat leave. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So like four or five shows mm-hmm. he's probably going to miss. I would four say, or five-ish, yeah. I would say at least. Adam's going to come yeah. back when he says, hey guys, I'm coming back. This is, At this time, it's like, okay, if you want the whole month of June, you can take the whole month of June, and then yeah. July's here, and we're going to take time off anyways. Yeah, I'm, I'm so. not going to be the one to be like, hey man. Come yeah. back. I have, a, I have a feeling his priorities are about to change slightly. Are, is something important going to happen? They're going to adjust a little <laughs> bit. So it's, we're, we're going to talk about, I don't know, whatever we want, really. Yeah. Our shows, I love Adam. And he makes the show what it is. Mm-hmm. But the shows where it's just us. Yeah. Because they're so rare and also so weird. I just I love doing them because I never I never know what's going to happen. Well, it's going to go off the rails is what's going to happen. Yeah. The first time Adam left us alone, I'm pretty sure we just ran out of things to talk about, so I told the fireworks story. I got, <laughs> yeah. I got mugged. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the first times. It was great. Cuz uh I think we were just like what are we going to do? And they're just like I have stories from my life yeah. that have nothing to do with anything, but they're stories. But Adam makes me justify things I bring to the table and he's mm. right. Hence iceberg. <laughs> He's 100% right. And with you, I was just like, I got a neat story where uh, someone shot fireworks in my head once. Let's, let's talk about it. And you're let's like, do right. it. And, you know, it'll only take a minute, and it was like 20 minutes. Uh, first iceberg we got to do is a clip I got to play for you. I want it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this off my laptop. I'm going to insert it after because Adam's not here, so I don't know how to play audio off of these fancy computers here. Fourth wall. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to play it for you. And I just want to know your reaction. <laughs> okay. Got everything. Well, what the hell are y'all doing leading the news with hockey? <laughs> now, I, understand, I, I mean, it, it's like, you know, listen, Toronto is a phenomenal city. You got, you're the only basketball team in the country. Boston is playing St. Louis in hockey. Yeah. It ain't the Maple Leafs. <laughs> and still, y'all talking <laughs> hockey in this town. I just don't understand. Can I just say, <laughs> I love Stephen A. Smith. Oh, yeah? I love him. Oh, I yeah? love him. I'm 100% with him. <laughs> Are you? I'm 100% with him. Uh, thank you. Okay, dude. Thank you. You know you know me, and I beat that drum. Mm-hmm. I Shut up about the, oh, the Leafs are overcovered criticism. Mm-hmm. It Listen, it is a license to print clicks. It is a license to print newspapers, radio uh, ratings, TV ratings. Not right now. Thank you. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. It's nobody right now. It's actually been a pretty busy last mm, 48 hours Mm -hmm. in terms of Leafs news. Oh, it's like our show is going to be jam-packed with Leafs stuff. Like, think if this was like a month ago or so. Well, we'd be talking about a Game 7 defeat again. But if this was Mm -hmm. about a month ago... And, you know, the Raptors are playing Orlando or whatever it is. Man, the Gordiev thing, which we will talk about. Mm-hmm. The Zaitsev thing, which we will talk about. Mm-hmm. The Marlowe thing that broke just before I walked in the door, oh, yeah. which we'll talk about. That's that's a jam-packed show. We could do half the show on Leafs. The mood in Toronto, the greater Toronto area, in the country, is give me Raptors. Give me Raptors. We've received a little bit of feedback where it's like, dude, I don't care about basketball at all. I'm punching out. That's fine. I'm Loyal listeners of the show, diehard Leaf fans or fans of whatever team, doesn't matter, are like, if it's not at least half an hour of Raptors today, yeah. I don't want to hear it. But it's because it's, it's not normal. Like, no. this is something that literally no one in this city has ever seen. No. Especially, it's the greatest moment in Canadian basketball history, which lends itself to being one of the greatest moments in sporting history in the country. The only thing that comes close 
I would guess, because mm-hmm. I was four, would would be the first time the Blue Jays made the World Series in ninety two. Yeah, and the difference and even the difference between that is there was a lead up. The Jays were good for those those years leading up to that, where it's like, okay, they could do it here. Okay, they could do it this year. Yeah. And then it seemed like a reality. But with the NBA, it's so star driven and for the twenty four years that the Raptors have been a team, there's always been, okay, Kobe's in the league, Tim Duncan's in the league, LeBron's in the yep. league. We can never have one of these guys, so we can never compete for a title like these other teams. We have Chris Bosch and, yeah. and, and Mo Pete. And, I remember oh, and Vince Car- on Mo <laughs> I'm sorry. I remember when uh, I first heard about Kawhi with the Spurs. Mm-hmm. And I got so annoyed. Because they they're already a dynasty. Like, they're one of the best-run organizations in sports, and it finally looks like the sun is setting on them. Mm -hmm. And they get this guy. They get a new... That team gets a new best player? Yeah. Are you joking me? And then early in his career, he wins finals MVP. It's and a he, was joke. A, he was a middle middle of the first round draft pick. Hilarious. The, the Spurs were never bad enough to draft high. Exactly. They, they, just got, they just got so lucky with Kawhi. Exactly. It was annoying that mm-hmm. Kawhi Leonard was a spur. Yeah. Because you're adding him to a team that's already a dynasty that already has Tony Parker and Ginobili and Tim Duncan and just came off of having David Robinson through the late 90s <sighs> and early 2000s. So annoying. You add Kawhi so it just kept going, the lineage, and and you, you were looking at the Spurs franchise, and you're like, okay, this is where it's going to keep going. It's Kawhi's going to be the next guy yep. to take it over. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, he he uh, gets his foot stepped on, and he doesn't want to play basketball for them anymore. And or whatever. In, or whatever. Because the more I learn about... The, it's such... I want the Raptors to win because I want the Raptors to win. But mm-hmm. also, I think it's genuinely one of the most interesting stories start to finish. In sports right now. Oh, yeah. The circumstances surrounding the trade. There's so many good quotes as well. Um, and just, like, I think about the playoff journey. Dude, they lose game one of the first round. Lowry gets zero points. Uh-huh. The friggin' Kawhi shot in game seven, which we've already talked about, is this ridiculous thing that'll never happen to anyone ever again. Not the four bounces, anyway. And... I just think of what a legendary quote it could end up being. It's not there yet, but what a legendary quote it could end up being. Kawhi, where do we go from here? I'm going back to Toronto for game three. <laughs> they were down 2 nothing. Is that bigger than I'm a fun guy? Yes. Yeah? Yes. But that's the, the laugh and I'm a fun guy <laughs> started it all. Well, And that's part of the story. Yeah. That's in there too. Mm-hmm. And you know what's great is in the 30... 30- Basically, I keep picturing the 30 for 30 about this Raptor season. They're going to have to include the um, the IG Live with his, was it, his cousin or his uh, sister? I think it was his sister. Yeah. Where uh, Uncle Uncle whatever his name is in the back, and he's like, it, they know Kawhi's not coming back, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then she has to delete it quickly. And that's part of it. Um, oh, yeah. The first time they play the Pistons, uh, Dwayne Casey comes <laughs> back to town. And, and they that, beat them. No, the, the, no, like the, the Pistons, Pistons beat them. Yeah, in a great beat the Raptors, comeback yeah. win. I th- didn't DeMars, <laughs> didn't the Spurs win the first game too? Uh, they won it. They won the one. In they San won Antonio. one of them. They split a one and one, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's just, it's such a good story start to finish. Yeah. And no, Stephen A's and right. It's load all management, even that. Like yep. the whole season, it's low. Okay. They haven't played enough games together. I was on the on the train of, okay, how are these guys going to be ready for the playoffs if they've played, like, 30 games as a full unit? Yeah. Like, everybody, and every night, somebody's taking a night off. It's Lowry's injured, or he's taking a night off. It's Kawhi's injured, or he's not injured. He's just taking a night off. Siakam's out there playing by himself. You know, it didn't make sense. And, and then you bring in that. And then you, Gasol. Yeah. And then Gasol. You bring in Gasol, who you got rid of Valanchunas, who I feel like... I'm kind of, he didn't deserve, he doesn't deserve anything this title. Like, I feel like people are given, like, you're 100% right. People are like, oh, DeMar, DeMar has a piece in this championship. Yes. Because he was such a franchise piece, but I'm not giving that to Valanchunas. No. Valanchunas is like, you should have showed up. When they started showing that stat of, uh, oh, Kawhi Leonard is already fourth in (laughs) Raptors playoff scoring, I go, what? Who's, okay, number one is DeMar, okay, that makes sense. Number two is Lowry or or whatever, I might have that order screwed up. Number three is Valanchunas? Right. Ever? <laughs> the history of the franchise. Ahead of Carter, McGrady, yeah. anybody. Thank God Kawhi's passed him because now <laughs> the top three, I'm like, okay, those are all names. We have guys there. Yeah. Guys who oh matter. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's... It's, it's, it's crazy. 
It's so good. It's my favorite story. And hockey is still popular here. Mm-hmm. It deserves its place in the landscape. It should not be leading off any broadcast in this city ever. It shouldn't even... If Hockey Central at noon was still on the air, they should be leading every show with, how about them Raptors? Mm-hmm. All right, now we get to hockey. So you already know, the Steve Dangle Podcast has teamed up with Crown Royal. Yes. And every episode, we have to crown a new king in sports. So my crown will retroactively go to that clip I just played of Stephen A. Smith, who is so right in that no news in this whole entire country should be leading with anything hockey. Mm. Let's go basketball. Let's go Raptors. 100%. Who are you giving your crown out to this week, Steve Dangle? That's a difficult one because I feel like I should do a hockey one. Sure. Um, why not? We led with basketball, so it's okay. You know what? Okay. Everyone's been talking about, well, and me, been talking about how all, you know, the lead up to the Stanley Cup final, I just can't get behind it. The Raptors, uh, in the gap between the Stanley Cup final, you know, oh, there's no hockey. So can I split the crown? Into two and give it to two. Can I? I'll give you Adam's crown for this week, so you get two crowns. Okay, so I'll give Adam's crown uh-huh. to the Ruin Naranda Huskies for winning the Memorial Cup. Oh, there and you go. I, I saw nothing, nothing about it, nothing. And it was like a cool comeback win. No one cares. You know what I saw about it? What I saw. This is so hockey. But all I saw about the Memorial Cup were people upset at Halifax for being in the final because they're the host team, and the host team gets the automatic bid. So people are like, why is this every year the host team gets in and they didn't have to compete to get it, and then they're in the final? But that's that's a tournament. Yeah, and I I don't like it. Yeah. I personally don't like it. Um, I don't think... Because the Memorial Cup goes to the best team in junior hockey. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, if... Like, this happened a few years ago. If you get knocked out in the second round of your own league's playoffs... And then, yeah, you win some round-robin tournament against these three teams who went through two extra rounds of war than you. You're not the best team in junior (laughs) hockey. You won a random round-robin tournament. Yeah. I think it's way more impressive to, like, win the OHL and then get knocked out in the Memorial Cup than to be the host team who didn't win your own league. Mm -hmm. It. The only time it made any sense in, I want to say, 2011... Mississauga went Game 7 overtime for the OHL and lost. But they were still in the Memorial Cup because they were hosting it. Like, you got to be... They just locked out that way, though. Yes. Yeah. It, um, so, no, I give it to Ruin Miranda yeah. for winning the Memorial Cup and not okay. getting the love they deserve. So that's, your, that's Adam's? That's Adam's giving? crown. Okay. Who's My your crown, crown going to? Finland. Okay. All of Finland. <laughs> All of it. Looking at Jurassic Park... And, you know, all these parties outside. Have you ever seen a party like this? And then Europe shows up. And they go, by the way, here's us jumping into a fountain when it's eight degrees outside or whatever it is because we won gold at the World Hockey Championship. Um, So I give it to Finland and I give it to Ruin Aranda. Um, Congrats to the Blues for tying the series. I I can't think about one particular blue. To give the crown to? Yeah. That's okay. You don't have to give it to... They were good, and they won. Yeah, we we can uh, we can get to the Stanley Cup Finals. You want to start there, Jesse? You are steering the good ship iceberg. (laughs) All right, we'll start there. So when you're watching the games, uh, why not consider a Crown Royal at puck drop? Why not? I do. So speaking of the games, yes, tied one one, going uh, going to Boston on Saturday, Mm -hmm. but going back to Game Two, St. Louis wins three two in OT. Carl Gunnison, after we say <laughs> oh, <laughs> that dude. he's the worst player on earth. I should have given him the crown. All right. Fourth crown. <laughs> Carl are, we allowed to, are we allowed to do this? Fourth crown. I think we might have to call Crown Royal to check if they can provide another crown. Okay. Because each time we do this, there's, there's a crown that goes out to these people. An actual gold. It's made of. It's made from Tiffany's. Crown Royal calls Tiffany's oh. every time, and they get a crown made, and they send it out to Finland or Dwayne Casey or Jonas Valanciunas Carl, or whoever. Carl, Carl Gunnarsson. Crownerson. So <laughs> Carl Crownerson. So uh, Carl Crownerson's got a got a crown yes, coming his way. He deserves it. Right. Uh, by the way, so. I've said this, this is now the third time I'm saying this crazy stat on camera. Mm-hmm. That's the thing when there's very little to talk about. But, um, so that was Gunnarsson's first ever playoff goal. 
in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Um, his first in 57 playoff games. So that's a lot of games. 56. Oh, it was 56? 56 career playoff games. That's from 57. Chris Johnson's article says 56. Cool. Well, one of us is wrong, so that would be great. <laughs> the only difference is I'll be wrong twice. Um, so he played that many games, but surely he must have scored a playoff goal in the AHL. Nope. Surely he must have scored a playoff goal in the SHL, the Swedish Hockey League. He played 38 games there in the playoffs. His last playoff goal came in 2006 when he was playing junior in Sweden. Oh, gosh. 13 years ago, his last playoff goal, and he scores an overtime winner uh, in the Stanley Cup final. Decent. And uh, also from Chris Johnson's summary of the game, uh, he was a healthy scratch in the Western Conference Finals. So we were right. We, it was like we chose um, Mayweather to beat McGregor, and then McGregor <laughs> went out there and beat him. You yes. know, we took the guy who looks like he's not going to do it, and then he did it. Like we, It was a safe bet to say that Carl Gunnarsson wasn't going to do anything in this series, and then he went out and did something. Guys, all it is proof <laughs> of is the dangle jinx is mighty. It's so powerful. We made Andre Pavlik into a Vesna candidate once. Like, don't ever judge, mm-hmm. don't ever uh, underestimate the power of the dangle jinx. Did you... Hear the story Barube told post game, yeah, about the about the, <laughs> piss. the piss at the urinal. <laughs> so for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Barube came in and said that he used the pisser after the third period. So we're heading into overtime, and Gunnarsson came and stood next to him, said uh, Oscar Sunquist, and then all Gunnarsson said to him was, "I just need one more chance." So at the end of the third, there's like two minutes left, and Gunnarsson goes right off of the post. Like, he beats Rass so clean. So good. And then he goes, and he takes a piss next to his head coach, and is like, I just need one more chance. And then he goes in overtime and scores. And the plan, Who gave him this confidence? The plan was <laughs> for him to take that shot, too. Yeah. He had it, didn't like what he had, gave it to O'Reilly. O'Reilly gave it back, bang. Is, uh, yeah, who gave him this? <laughs> who, what made Carl Gunnarsson go, tonight's my night? I'm the guy. Like, he can... Do you understand a good game for Carl Gunnarsson has nothing to do with him scoring a goal? No. Or even coming close to it? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not what he's supposed to do. How many shots did he have? All playoffs. All play... Oh, my God. How many games has he played? Oh, so how many... Uh, I can... I'll, I'll answer your question anyway. Okay. 15. 15 all playoffs. I'm giving him, like, a shot per game. Or something like that. He has played 14. A dirty dozen. I'm going to give him a dozen. Three. What? (laughs) This guy's shooting 33%? He's had three shots all playoffs. This is one of the most unlikely OT winners ever. He... (laughs) Like, think of any bench player from, like, the Jordan Bulls. Just put, put the ball in my hand, coach. <laughs> like just Carl like imagine was just like, I got the magic tonight. Jeremy Lin at the end yeah. of g- game six versus the Bucks. Lin goes is in and is like the dagger. <laughs> Air ball. Like just think of how different the moment would be. Oh yeah. What? Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, no, he deserves a crown. Uh what were your takeaways from the game? Um that the blues are in a really good spot. Um I know they they took back home ice advantage. But game one and two, I didn't call them playing out exactly the way that they did, but I did call that they'd be sloppy. And the Blues were awful in game one, mm-hmm. and still they're up 2 nothing, um, 21 minutes into the game. Yeah. And then the Bruins were awful in game two. And yet they had uh, the one nothing lead and then the 2-1 lead mm-hmm. early, so... Yeah, and at the 2-1 lead, the Bruins looked good to start. Yeah. Because, like, uh, they they score, St. Louis scores, and then, like, a minute later, they answer back. Right. And at that point, you have the audacity to send out a tweet that says, Adam Wilde was right. This series is over. I and mean, <laughs> they looked terrible. They did. They looked really, really bad. They did, but from... Like what it was? When did they score in the in the first to tie it back two two? Like a minute left to go in the first. Oh, to tie it two two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. All I know is the first goal came within the first five minutes. But all I remember is what I was saying um, after game one 
Because the Blues, it was still a tight game, but they took five penalties. I was like, okay, if you just stay out of the box, you'll be okay. Within uh, four minutes, they uh-huh. took a stupid penalty and got scored on. I'm like, they're going to lose the series because they're obviously not learning. Uh-huh. Uh, and then and they even still like took five. middle of the second period, they have a four man power play that they are four minute, sorry, four minute power play where they don't score at all. They get a little close, like they looked good on the power play, but they don't score. And then it's still 2 2, and you're like, okay, they're looking great, but yep. they're Tuka Rask is standing on his head. And there's like, again, <laughs> they, you need two hands to count the, uh, the amount of amazing saves he had last game. The series so far has been a good example of just stop the next one. Because mm-hmm. the two that Bennington gave up were terrible, mm-hmm. I thought. Um, but he stopped the next one. He he managed to stop the bleeding um, when the Bruins, I want to say, made it 2-1. Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, I think the Blues are in a fantastic position. Um, like, in terms of momentum and everything. Because I thought the series was going to start sloppy because of the, the big layoff. Now, the more hockey they play, the more it's going to tighten up. Well, while it's tightening up, they're the ones dictating play. Because they have home ice advantage. They play this physical game. They have a chance to w- really wear Boston down. Their for defenseman two games. looks bigger. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, it's, I, I, it's probably the best decor that Boston's had to play. Hmm. Um, Columbus may be the most mobile. Hold well, on. Well, Carolina was pretty Hold good, too. Hold on. What? What are you saying about Zaitsev and Muzzin? Muzzin? Listen. <laughs> Muzzin was one guy, <laughs> and he beat the shit out of David Pasternak. Uh-huh. Like, I mean, you can't give the Leafs credit for what the Blues are doing, but <laughs> whenever you're in the Stanley Cup final, you bear the scars of the first three rounds. And the Leafs left one, mm-hmm. as any team will do, uh, you know, in any playoffs. Seven series. games but is a long time. Muzzin mashed a few of those guys up real bad. Yeah. Um, and now... <laughs> Now the Blues have, like, three of those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they have, like, three Muzzins. Pareko's a monster. Uh, Petrangelo's a monster. Bomeister, for his entire career, has played half an hour a game, no matter how good or bad he's played. <laughs> it's the strangest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Um, but anyway, yeah, sorry. So momentum is on the Blues' side because the series is going to tighten up and they have home ice advantage. They can't go back to Boston with this series tied, though. Mm. Because then you give it right back to them, and oh, uh, so you're saying they need a, it needs to be three one. It needs to be three one. You, yeah. you can't just if you're up two one in the series of Blues win game three. Yeah. Don't sit back. Boston's been down two one. Uh, Boston's been losing a playoff series three times these playoffs, and each time they've come back. Each time they've come back. Yeah. Um, what do you think of this comeback? So this is from uh, Luke's Fo- Luke Fox's uh, Stanley Cup recap of last Jukebox. game. Jukebox. The problem in this series, however, is that the Blues' trio, top trio of Shen, Tarasenko, and Schwartz has so dominate, dominated Cassidy's best-on-best best matchup, the coach was forced to get away from the clash early, attempting to free Bergeron's group midway through Game 1 by giving Sean Crowley's fourth line the Shen assignment. In Game 2, Cassidy demoted the silent Pasternak to the second line and bumped up Heinen. Bergeron gave the puck away four times in Game 1, more than anyone on the ice. Ditto Marshan in Game 2. Marshan's also, been invisible. Also in Game 2, the Selkie finalists went a dismal 38% in the face-off dot and played a mere 16-16 despite five Bruin power plays and the contest needing overtime. Yeah. Their line was also an atrocious 26.7% uh, Corsi. Oh! While Shen's was 71.4. So... Oh, wow. Everyone's saying, out of the the terrible play of the perfection line, uh, is Bergeron secretly injured? Yes. You 100% think that's true? Yes. And, and so is Martian. And are they a sleeping giant? Oh, they're definitely a sleeping giant. Because I, I'm just listening to this going, this is a... Everything comes back to the Leafs, but this is literally just a repeat of what we talked about with the Leafs. Mm. Through three games... Oh, the Tavares Marner Hyman line, they're doing such a good job of shutting them down. Jake Muzzin, he's mashing up Pasternak. And then what happened in game four? All Cassidy had to do was go hine in for Pasternak. And that that was it. Like that completely changed up the game plan. It completely changed the energy. It changed up defensive assignments. But I feel like the Blues have a little bit more defensive depth uh than the Bruins. 
have, well, not than the Bruins have faced. Than the Leafs. <laughs> so they're able to contend with it a bit more, but Bruce Cassidy's had to adjust mm-hmm. at least three times, like we talked about, when they're losing. The difference uh, is, I think, earlier in the playoffs, he was adjusting because the players hadn't quite found their mojo. Now I think he's adjusting because they're banged up. If that's my next thing, is are they too beaten down to bounce back? Like, okay, they they're be. supposed to be a sleeping giant, but what if they can't wake up? This this happened against Chicago, right? Like, they were still so good, and Bergeron was still so good. And then you find out what he was playing through in 2013, and you're like, well, no wonder. Mm-hmm. And they still pushed Chicago to six and almost seven. It took two goals in 17 seconds uh, to push, or to not have seven uh, in that ridiculous series. But, yeah, Bergeron not even playing 17 minutes is absurd. Yeah. And Marchand, we, we talked about this um there's injuries that heal with a few days, and there's injuries where if having 11 days off doesn't take care of it, it's going to be there the second game one is over. Like, it's going to be, maybe you won't feel it in the first game, but you'll feel it in on the bus mm-hmm. or on the plane afterward. You're going to feel it the next morning, and it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. If the Leafs had 11 days off... That wouldn't have healed Zach Hyman's knee. No. It wouldn't have healed Travis Dermott's shoulder. That's gonna that's staying in there until you take months off and you get surgery, probably. Yes. <laughs> so with Marchand, what gave me pause was they gave him like a morning skate off or something right before the final, and I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. They, he hasn't played a game in almost two weeks. He doesn't need to rest. <laughs> so something's wrong there. Something's wrong. And they could still win. <laughs> they could still just, they could still easily win. It went to overtime, man. Has your prediction of the Stanley Cup Finals changed? If I gave you the opportunity to redo your say you placed a bet and I say, do you want to take back your bet or make a new one? Do you want to, would you change it up? Would you bet on St. Louis now? With what you've seen? No, because I hmm. a big problem with my betting is I always flop. <laughs> and right now my brain is screaming because I would like to change my bet, okay. but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm still gonna say I. Th- I want to say I said Bruins in six. You did, uh, yeah. Or was it seven? I think it was Bruins in six. Bruins in a long series. Yeah. Um, losing Grizzly hurts though. Mm. That hurts big time because even though I, I want to say he was third pair for them, the, they're already overworking McAvoy. They're already well. They're not overworking him. They're relying on him heavily. They're heavily relying on Tory Krug. Char is the one I'm really worried about. This guy. Time's undefeated. And if the Blues are playing with speed, which they are, which they weren't earlier in the season when they were in last place, Char's going to have a tough time. That led to the second goal. It was it was a giveaway as well. Yeah, but it was I'm trying the, to think back. The, or was it the second goal? The, it was the Tarasenko goal where he got the second whack at it with the backhand. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the, the and Bruins it went, tried to push like, it to over the him. Yeah, 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 I know the one you're talking about. And I want to say on the it close was, side. It was Tarasenko, yeah, it was Tarasenko beaming up the boards. Marchand tried to intercept him, couldn't do it. Sends it over to Shen. Shen gets a shot off, stopped by Rast. Tarasenko gets the rebound, stopped by Rast, but he also gets the backhand. And Char is the only guy back. And he's, listen, you can only take up so much space. Mm -hmm. You can't just, eventually standing there and being a big body isn't helpful. Yeah, it's, (laughs) having Char as your only guy back is rarely ever a good thing. Mm -hmm. And he was bleeding after game one. Okay, think of how hard you would have to get hit in the forearm with a puck yeah. to bleed. Oh, in like the forearm, how Char was bleeding. yeah. And he said it was fine. <laughs> well, he's a big dude. No, he's a big guy. There's no way you're telling me. There's no, there's nothing there. He's unaffected. He's fine. He's a tree. I don't He'll know live. about that. I'm also amazed how seldomly that happens. Bleeding I, on like your. No, just Other something parts? happening with that little area of exposed wrist. Mm. It makes yeah. me so nervous. Travis Dermott's the worst for the Leafs. because He rides them like up here, like yeah, halfway the, to his elbow. Yeah. And I'm like, all it's going to take is one asshole. Claude Giroux, come on down. He seems like the sort of dude who would do it. <laughs> who would just go whack. And yeah, I'll take the two-minute slash. Mm-hmm. I'll, well, there's, I'll take whatever. There's like that exposed area there, and then there's also the inside of your like bicep. 
because only that's tender, the, yeah, yeah. The the outside is really only covered, and like yeah. your elbow there, yeah. But there's little exposed areas all over uh, hockey equipment that seems a little dangerous. But like, like you'd have to work real hard to like sort of get in there and yeah. get to the bicep, and and like even then it's like sort of. Mm-hmm. It's like sort of mobile. If you were to poke up at it, at least the arm would go up yeah. a little. There's bit. a little space in between, like your your rib cage yeah. there. If your your pants aren't riding the highest, yeah. you know you can get hit right right in the middle. That you ever see? Um, go back and watch a clip. It's a, it's a great clip, start to finish. It's Tyler Sagan skating through the neutral zone when he was still in the Bruins. Mm-hmm. Alexia Mellon goes like right underneath with a cross check, and he gets he gets Sagan. Like right between his ribs and his pelvis. Oh gosh! Like just mm, nails him. Second goes down like a sack of potatoes. Chara runs up to a melon and just beats the beats the brakes off him. It's so good. Oh yeah! It's a it was a weird time to cheer for the Bruins. <laughs> um, do you have any thoughts on Sunquist's one game? It's what I thought. Yeah. It's what I thought. It was a rare. Rare instance of me nailing it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Hell, bro's over. Steve yeah. Dangle got something right. Iceberg. Woo. Iceberg. Iceberg. No, um. It's hell froze over and iceberg. What? Two, two frozen things references. Oh, my God. It's yeah. crazy. Look at um, that. He, yeah, I saw. There's the old hockey thing. You can't go into the corner like that. Um, because what's he supposed to do? The answer was going is for the not hit, hit him. Yeah, yeah. That's the answer. And what I've what I've been riding for a couple days is the difference between contact and a hit. Mm. I do believe that contact was unavoidable on that play. And there could have been a play where Sunquist goes into Grizzlick and still smushes him, and maybe Grizzlick still gets hurt. He threw a hit, and he threw it when he didn't have to. And I know it's a split second decision, but yeah. it's a decision he he made. Yeah. At no point, there was no point where Grizzlick's nameplate wasn't completely visible to him. And all of those decisions are split second decisions? Hockey yeah. is such a fast sport, nothing is not a split second decision, unless it's something that's clearly you thought about it. And in those instances, we're not arguing about it. Yeah. The only things to talk about are those split second decisions. So I don't think that's an argument that, like for him not getting suspended. It's yeah. like, no, that's what the decision you make on the ice, and he made the wrong one. I don't know. Hockey is just, it's romantically talked about like it's war, and we've been through that. And, like, dude, there are still, there's rules to hitting. Mm-hmm. And he violated them. Like, I, I didn't think it was, here's here's one that I found really funny. Did you see the Twitter exchange between PJ Sock and Cam Jansen? No, I did not. So PJ Stock, former Bruin, Cam Jansen, former Blue. Uh huh. And PJ Stock's like, oh my God, how is that not five in a game? And then Cam Jansen comes in and he goes, you know, nope, what's he supposed to do? Or I, I can't remember what it was. He couldn't, no, he turned at the last minute. Okay. And the Leaf fan in me was just like, of course Cam Jansen <laughs> thinks that, who decked Thomas Caverly from behind and knocked him out cold. How do you, re- wait, when? Uh,. I think it was while I was making videos. I want to say oh eight oh nine. I see you sit there and say, "Ah, Cam Jansen with your deck cabaret on February second at eight oh three p.m." I don't think most people are sitting there saying that, Steve. No, you know what it was? It was two thousand seven. <laughs> I remember where I was when I watched it. Of course you do. Remember, where were you? I was. Uh, I was in my friend's basement. Pretty sure. Mm-hmm. It was. I. It was either that game that I saw at my friend's basement or I saw the revenge game. So I remember mm. that hit because of all the circumstances around it. <laughs> I'm maybe about to jar your memory uh, loose. Okay. So, Where was I in 2007? I don't think I, I don't know, was I in high school? Yes, you would have been in high yeah, school. I was yeah. just finishing my first year of university. Oh, okay. So you so would have been in like grade 10. Nine or nine? 10. No. Yeah. It depends on what, uh, what side of 2007 it happened on. It happened in the winter. Up. So I might have been like grade nine. Like early 2007. Yeah, so I might have been grade nine. No. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyway. We'll figure it out. So Cam Jansen <laughs> decks Caberlet from behind, knocks him out cold. The Leafs went with a funny lineup that night where they didn't really have any tough guys. Darcy Tucker was out with an injury, so he was riding a bike or whatever, and Wade Belak, who was their enforcer, mm-hmm. wasn't in the lineup. So Cam Jansen decks him from behind. Belak is up in the press box somewhere. So 
who is in the hallway riding his bike, Darcy Tucker. And he runs out. Oh, no way. And starts screaming at everybody. Yeah. We talked about this story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, I mean, in a fight, like, Cam Jansen would have murdered Darcy Tucker. Oh, yeah. Like, they're just not in the same weight class. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Tucker, who is not involved at all in this game, runs out from the bike. Yeah. And then... In the revenge game, the first game against the Devils in Toronto, Belak is in the lineup because obviously, mm-hmm. and the, and it's just so great because there's an audible Cam, and they just went toe to toe with center ice. It was awesome. How do you remember that? I think that's a good time to talk about current Leafs news. Ah, yes. Okay, fine. Um, let's start with the Maple Leafs Instagram account. Uh, okay. The Maple Leafs Instagram account last night posted a photo of Nazem Kadri, <laughs> John Tavares, uh, Travis Dermott, Zach Hyman, all at Mitch Marner. Yes, all in a box at the Raptors game. I saw Zach Hyman on my way here today. Did you really? He was standing right outside the Hockey Hall of Fame. Did you say hi? No, because I was driving and oh. it was scary. Was he? Intro. Were people like? He was talking to someone, but I don't know if it was a fan. Okay. Yeah, he that's was right so out, weird. <laughs> he was right in front of that, um, you know, that statue of all the the kids. Yeah, yeah. In front of exactly the, hockey the hall corner of you're talking about. Yeah, he was right there. Oh wow. I go. That guy looks like Zach. Hyman. That is Zach. Hyman. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You should have stopped. It went in. It slammed on the brakes. You should have asked him. Zach! You should have asked him if last night's gathering at the Raptors game means that they're all coming back to play next season. Because is that what that means? If, if if last time they didn't sit together means Nazem Kadri is getting traded. Maybe the fact that they're all sitting together now in a box means that they're coming back. And one player who was not there is clearly being traded. Who's that? Kasperi Kapanen. A hundred percent. Because he was in Toronto. He was in Toronto. He wrote on the Maple Leafs Instagram under this photo, My invite must have gotten lost, huh? He is like (laughs) the social media loser of the Leafs, this poor guy. 100%. 100%. Except he's not, because he's Except always he's like, not. check out my amazing girlfriend. Uh, yeah, and my awesome life. Yes, and but, yeah. yes, and also I'm Casperi. And Captain. I'm happy, and I'm Casperi. But he's always like, oh, I didn't get an endorsement, <laughs> Mitch. Oh, I didn't get invited to the Raptors game. He's one of my Mitch. He's one of my favorite Instagram followers, just to see him reply to the other Maple Leafs. He, I feel like if they really just go, listen, Cappy, hmm. I know you're the fast guy, but you're our troll. <laughs> yeah. You're for years to come, if you want to be our resident asshole, we will let you develop into the asshole you need to be. Mm. We will let you live your worst life. If they do that, I think he'll be so good. I think that's his future <laughs> he'll be with a the star. Leafs. Oh my god. Uh. And a fan favorite. Oh yeah. He's a, people already like him because he's a video game. Because <laughs> he has a video game? He is a video game. He's so fast. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. he's 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 every e- EA SHL player. Hmm. Just, hmm, what should I do strategically? Oh, I know. Go full bore. <laughs> and, oh, what should I do this time? Oh, go nuts. So, big big Leafs news, I guess. Big. Whatever, whatever you want to quantify big as. Zaitsev requests a trade yesterday. That's big. That's pretty big. To me, that's big. So, he's citing uh, personal reasons at his motiv- as his motivator. Uh, Elliot Friedman tweeted, after a difficult season, T-O-R, so he used the correct... Um, Abbreviation. That's how which, you know it's serious. Yeah, that's how you know it's a serious tweet. Toronto and Nikita Zaitsev are working together to find him a fresh start. He is available, and we will see where he goes. And then Bob McKenzie followed up with three tweets. It's going to take a little bit to go through. There were, like, article tweets. we got nothing but time. It was Nikita Zaitsev who, for personal reasons, asked Toronto today to try to facilitate a trade. He has five years remaining on a contract with an average of 45 Toronto will try to oblige Zaitsev, but are not in salary cap position to retain much. It's easy to say Toronto would like to lose the longer-term financial commitment to Zaitsev, and perhaps that is true, but that contract could also limit the trade return on the player. His departure would create a hole on the blue line that already has holes. Since the league was made aware this morning of Zaitsev's availability, there have been multiple inquiries, but it remains to be seen how many teams expect Toronto to retain salary or make a soft slash limited run or return deal because of the term slash money owed to him. Steve Dangle. Yes. What are your thoughts? Um, my first thought was, oh, good. 
my second thought was personal reasons. Oh, and then I felt bad. Right? Because <laughs> really, well, because you don't know. <laughs> I didn't. I never. That never crossed my mind. Maybe that makes me so heartless. No, but I never thought. I was like, okay. I just thought about the hockey side of it. I well, guess. I think we think about. Like, as fans, I mean. Like, mm-hmm. we think about hockey very simplistically, mm-hmm. and we're always like, oh, he wants to, he likes the weather, or he doesn't like the weather, or he doesn't like the coach, or whatever. Personal reasons could be the entire world of things. Yeah. You just have true. no idea. And, like, with Patrick Berglund, even sort of, when we were talking about that with Buffalo, we're like, wow, that guy must really hate Buffalo. And then we <laughs> go through it, and it's like, oh, like, he oh. doesn't even... It sounds like his life is not fun. He's not having a great time. Yeah. And like even with Robin Leonard, we're like, oh boy, that guy's that guy's really tightly wound. What's his problem? Mm-hmm. And then in the summer, he's like, by the way, here's everything I'm going through. And you go, right. holy shit. So, so for Zaitsev, it might be a little different because it's not like he's quitting hockey. No. It sounds like there are just issues with the city, mm-hmm. the team, everything around it. Maybe here's the chatter of... The, just the fans and the media saying, let's get rid of this guy. Maybe he doesn't like that. Maybe he doesn't Could like he... how big hockey is here. Maybe he's not adjusting to the city. Who knows what personal reasons are? I don't know. But from a hockey perspective, what do you think? Uh, from a hockey perspective, uh, you know, they were talking about the salary retention and mm-hmm. all that. I think it's great news, at least from a hockey perspective, because it's one thing when it's Dubas calling up teams and Lawrence Gilman calling up teams going, hey, this guy's available. What do you want? What do you want? Whatever. It's different when you have the agent helping you out. Mm. So Dan Milstein is probably making calls to other GMs, executives throughout the league and going, my client would love to play for your team. Or my client is interested in this situation. Does he have a partial no trade? I think I he does. I will check once. I want to say it's 10 teams Okay. he can't go to, which is limiting and frustrating. But I, um, Dubas's job, the Leafs' job, becomes so much more so much easier when it's the player facilitating it. It is 10 teams. 10, ten teams. Team no trade, yeah. So some of you might be saying, well, what are you talking about? The Leafs have no leverage because the player requested a trade, so they know they're trying to dump them. Mm-hmm. Well, teams knew that anyway. So right. I don't think that that changes anything. So the, the fact they have the agent helping them out, I think that's huge. Okay. Uh, it's surprising. Yeah. And I, I saw it pointed out on Twitter. He's got a... I want to say he's got a signing bonus coming to him July 1st of $3 million bucks. Okay. So maybe what happens that makes the trade easier um, and less likely that the Leafs have to retain salary, which is ridiculous. They will be retaining salary, really. They'll be it, – it's the cap that gets affected by it. Yeah, because they're going to they're gonna wait till that July 1st date, for yeah, sure. pay the money, yeah. and then send them to wherever you're sending them to. So you're making the team pay 1.5, essentially. Yes. But the cap hit is zero, because it's theirs now. So they get... Yeah. This well, is the cap for the hit Leafs. for the Leafs yes, is yeah. zero now. It's all 4.5 on the other team. Which is... Uh, it's so ridiculous. The hard cap, just the ways of getting around it mm-hmm. are so silly. Like, So wait a sec, you're telling me the Leafs are paying... Almost all of it. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. That's ridiculous. But um, no, that to me is interesting. What yeah. what has also been interesting, and maybe this can connect. No, we'll we'll, we'll talk. No the Marner here, deal. Let's no. Let's get to. Okay, we can get to Marner that... and we can get to Marlow because oh, remind okay, me Marlo. about the point I was about to make about Zaitsev because it all connects to this eureka moment I had yesterday about Marlow about the Leafs. Okay, just give me give me the moment. The moment. Well, okay. So what's, there's, what's the your, there's your Zaitsev reason? and people were saying, well, oh my God, their right side is already so bad, and then you're going to lose this guy. And mm-hmm. I think it was Luke Fox tweeted, uh, next year the Leafs' longest tenured right-handed D is Justin Hall. If Ron Hainsey doesn't come back. If yes, well, and he's not right-handed. He plays oh, right. He D, plays but he's on not the right. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, <laughs> Which is, insane. but that's gonna change. So Patrick Marlowe <laughs> might be going to LA, but like he's he's always taking Austin mm-hmm. and Mitch on trips in the van. And that Patrick Marlowe going to LA is something that just broke from Pierre LeBrun as yes. soon as we started recording. Pierre tweeted, "Hearing the Leafs and Kings have talked about a potential trade uh, for Patrick Marlowe. Obviously, there's Todd McClellan connection there for Marlowe, so he might waive his no trade clause." But as of now, I don't think the two teams have found a fit. 
Kings would need to unload a contract or two as well. So there's that. Mm -hmm. There's the Mitch Marner thing. Will he stay or will he go? Yes. So. So what is your moment? What is your thought? Sometimes it takes a particularly powerful message to just make you put so many things together. And I've talked about this many times, how I didn't enjoy this Leaf season. It wasn't fun. And I think you speak for the fan base when you say that. Yes. Yes. Because, and listen, I know it wasn't everyone, which everyone mentions every time, (laughs) but listen, they signed John Tavares. It was unbelievable, unprecedented. I couldn't believe that it happened. They're going to be such a good team. But William Nylander's not signed. Mm. And we were miserable throughout that whole thing. And, oh, my God, they lost Curtis McElhaney. They lo- the Leafs signed John Tavares, and our first order of business was to complain about losing Curtis McElhaney mm-hmm. and uh, losing Calvin Pickard which I was more mad about than anyone else, I think. Um, And Garrett Sparks hasn't been very good. And even though the Leafs are winning hockey games and everything's going great, they don't have Nylander. Mm -hmm. And then Matthews gets hurt. So they don't have Nylander or Matthews. And they're still winning hockey games. Didn't they have, like, they had, like, a 7,500 record or something like that. Without Matthews? And Nylander. It was unbelievable. It was insane. Nylander's contract gets signed. Mm-hmm. So now, we're, so this is like December now. Yeah, now yeah. we need to focus on complaining about. Well, he started the season poorly, and also, what about Matthews? Mm-hmm. And then Matthews gets signed, and then the day after that day, <laughs> or that day, literally that day, we start with the Marner anxiety because of his friggin' agents. And all that time, Curtis McElhaney is lighting it up, and he is, <laughs> and he is lighting and it up, and we're saying, what the hell? We have Garrett Sparks. We spent, and the, and now, so, Give us back our McElhaney. Give us back our McElhaney. Give him back a lady. <laughs> Give him so, back a lady. So now, all we're doing is focusing on Mitch Marner, and I suppose that makes sense. It's the single biggest story for the Leafs heading into this offseason. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. And then there's the Kapanen stress and Janssen stress that's added on to that. Did you see the two and a half minute hype up video for Game One for the Raptors? Uh, the one Sportsnet produced. The one that Socrates narrated. Yes. First of all, it's mm. one of the best, if not the best, hype up videos I've ever seen in my oh, entire yeah. life. It was so good. It was bone chilling. And what I think a lot of people missed uh-huh. in how hype it was, what a lot of people missed is the script was barely altered. It was almost word for word from the game one of the regular season hype-up video that they made for the Raptors. Oh, no way. It was, uh, and they did little callbacks to it. Like, they at the, at the beginning of the season, it was like, do you think it was easy to let this man go? And it was DeMar DeRozan. Mm-hmm. For the game one hype-up video, do you think it was easy to let these men go? And it was DeLon Wright, uh, Jonas Valanciunas, and uh, CJ Miles, CJ's PJs, or IP. Hilarious commercial. <laughs> Even in Memphis. Yeah. Loved it. So they did all these callbacks to it. And it and the message was and the and they went back to what Masai Ujiri was saying as soon as the trade was made. Like stop with the insecurities. Believe what was it? Believe in this city. Believe in yourselves. Mm-hmm. Was, the message was we're trying to win a championship. We're trying to win a championship. Stop worrying about whether or not Kawhi is gonna stay. Yeah. Stop worrying about any of it. Just freaking go for it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Loyalty. Gosh, marlo has been such a good guy. And, oh, no, the Leafs don't have it. The right side's going to be so bad. As opposed to what? <laughs> As opposed to what exactly? Mm-hmm. It's trash. So I think the Toronto Raptors, and please win. Please win. Because I think it'll permanently change Sports in this country, and definitely sports in this city forever. The fact that you have a guy like Masai Ujiri, who we kept talking about all the Blue Jackets really going for it. That's going to really have an influence on GMs. You have Masai Ujiri, who's available to talk to Kyle Dubas and Brendan Shanahan any day they want. 
mm-hmm. and I ran into Brendan Shanahan at NBA which we'll get Media to. Day, which we'll get to. And he specifically referenced getting to talk to Masai Ujiri and how he's been a guide for him. It is hugely influential. Dude, the loyalty, get it all out. All out, forget yeah. it. Marlo's a nice guy. Don't care. You got to go Glen Gary, Glenn Ross about this. Because the goal is to win. The and if, if you were loyal, win. if you were loyal to Demar at the moment, you would have none of this. Yeah. If you get good value, a hundred percent, hundred percent. If you didn't make the trade, and they gave them chances. Oh yeah, they gave them chances, which is which is a key thing that was referenced. That I can't remember by who. The core was given chances. They had their final flop in mm-hmm. getting swept. What was he supposed to do? What was he supposed to, to give do? you another chance? This it's make about, the second round again. It's about winning. And he was. He said he's he's done. He's gonna try and win. He has an opportunity here to get a guy that he think will give him a better chance to win. And that was it. That's 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 the game. The game is to win the title, yeah. not to get to the second round. And here is something that will increase my odds to get to the championship. You see the tweet. So I'm gonna do it. You see the tweet going around. Um, what would you rather have? The Raptors win the 2019 title or mm-hmm. Kawhi signs long term? That's stupid. It's the dumbest tweet I've ever 2019 seen. 2019 title. It's it's ridiculous. Nobody is arguing the Kawhi to stay. There's there's like. It's not devoid of it, but there is. People are less bitter about the Blue Jays being bad mm-hmm. than I thought they'd be. I don't think anybody's noticing the Blue Jays are playing baseball games. Well, yeah. So they've they've been poorly <laughs> managed the last couple of years, yeah. but people understand. All right, they got some young players, and also the right. fact that all those guys who they bought jerseys for are gone. That was. They understood what was going on there. Yeah, we're going for it for two years. Hard. I don't think, I think this city has a love for Alex Anthopoulos because he That's tried it. to bring, he tried to do what Masai did. He went out, he sold the entire prospect pool of the Blue Jays, and that's why they're going to be so bad for the next couple of years yeah. because he went for the Masai home run and he tried to win a championship in Toronto and he went out and got Ari Dickey. He made, he got Jose Reyes and he mm-hmm. said, I'm going to try for these couple of years while these guys are all good and I have an MVP in Josh Donaldson. I'm going to try and win a championship. Yep. And he almost did it. He was so close. If it wasn't for the damn Kansas City Royals, <sighs> he could he could have had it. And, well, you know, the Raptors, the Raptors were... One basket away from overtime in Game Seven, and then you just lose in the second round again. What about what if the ball doesn't take that crazy bounce? What if? What if? What if? Yeah, well, what if? That's a great story. You should you should write it and sell it and file it under fiction. They sank the damn basket. They made it to the third round. They were down two nothing. They won the thing, and now they're in the Stanley Cup uh, <laughs> Stanley Cup <laughs> final. <laughs> they're in the NBA final. And they are three wins away from a championship, which is still a lot of wins away from a championship when you're playing the Golden State Warriors. But they're here. So the the two messages that hit me the most was basically just believe in yourself, always bet on yourself. And, oh my God, I'm still so tired. I'm in sleep debt from this past week, which, <laughs> which right. we'll get to. What was the second thing? Uh, freaking go for it. Yeah. Go for it. it yeah. Listen, do you think, you know, do you think it'd be easy for the locker room to trade Patrick Marlowe? No, I don't think so. It's every trade I think is hard. Yeah, well, that's what it is, man. That's what it is. Like, uh, stop. You can't be satisfied with, well, if only the Leafs didn't have to play the Bruins in round one, they would have done well. That you could argue. If the Bruins win the cup, if you really wanted to argue the Leafs for the second best team in the league, you sure fill your boots. I bet you could. Mm-hmm. Bet you could do that. I don't care. The reality is they have to play them. Do what you got to do to beat them. Um, you sent us a tweet from Scott Wheeler earlier this week. Oh, yes. Here, can you read it? It says he. Uh, yeah, bu- a bunch of you are about to get screamed at. <laughs> I just want you to know that. He was replying to a, a tweet from Scott Rolest, Rolston. Rolst, who, I don't know. Rolston, who said, uh, the Leafs are not close to a cup. Because Scott Wheeler was talking about some something. And he says, the Leafs uh, team, he's, Mitch Marner is going to go to a team that's not close to the cup. And Scott Rolston says, the Leafs aren't close to a cup. So then Scott Wheeler replies, and he says, the Leafs can beat any team in the NHL in a seven-game series and nearly beat the one that many think will win the whole thing. 
Jesse, can you read the stats for that tweet? The ratio? 489 comments. 16 retweets. Oof. 260 likes. Ooh. It's safe to say that this tweet got ratioed to death. It got ratioed hard, yeah. and I guess it was a slow day that day. Uh, this was twenty eighth, so Wednesday. Yeah, it was. Uh, the, it was the tweet of the day. Yeah, sure. It was the tweet that everyone had to take. <laughs> everyone in Leafs Nation. That's not. <laughs> oh no no no! Yeah, outside of Leafs Nation, it hit. Oh, yeah. it was everyone's favorite punching bag. <laughs> they almost beat the Bruins. Well, they didn't. It's well, they didn't, and it's yeah, it is it's true, true, Jesse. Yeah. Very observant of you to note that the Leafs did not I, beat the Bruins. I, Steve Dangle. I'm a connoisseur of factual information. There you go. I know how to divulge factual information onto the people. And it is factual information that the Maple Leafs did not beat the Boston Bruins this it's year in the playoffs. true. Yep. You nailed it, buddy. You're right. But for a second, <laughs> yeah. can we all stop pretending like we don't know what the hell this guy is talking about? No. Can we all stop pretending that we don't know exactly what Scott Wheeler was saying? That the Leafs are a good team? He did, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but they That's are. Screw the you. They are. Yeah. They are. Screw all of you. He said it. In a, he, I'm, I'm not. He said it in a poor way. Maybe. <laughs> but the idea that well they didn't win a series. <laughs> With by the way. Everyone, I saw Oilers fans, yeah. and I'll leave the ones of you who are not guilty of this out of it, but I saw someone go, uh, the Leafs and the Panthers are the only teams that haven't won a playoff series in the salary cap era. So, if you have not won a cup, and I'll be generous and extend this to if you haven't at least won your conference, sit the fuck down. Yeah. Who are you? Hey, at least we won a playoff series. Good for you. Hang that with all your other participant ribbons you still yeah. have from elementary school and shit. You Who hang, cares? You hang banners for one reason. That's for championships. one reason. Yeah. President's trophy an exception, and that's a yearly, sure. it's an annual argument. Yeah. It's an annual, oh, we won the second, the first or second round once. Shove it! No. Who cares? No. So, I want to hear, I'll hear from Bruins fans. They have a recent cup. I'll hear from Blackhawks fans. I'll hear from Kings fans. I'll hear from Penguins fans. And the Caps, you can join in now, too. Mm -hmm. What's it like on the other side there, Caps fans? Is it a lot of fun? I bet it is. <laughs> but can everyone stop pretending like they don't know exactly what Scott Wheeler was saying? Which is they're knocking on the door. They didn't get through it. Mm -hmm. They didn't get through it. But stop pretending like you don't know exactly what he's saying. It's Listen, if you're joking around and ha-ha, you just want to throw a little dunk on it, whatever, that's fine. That's hockey Twitter. I get it. Mm -hmm. That's fair game. But for all the people who were genuinely like, what are you talking about? They didn't even you win know the first what he's round series. About. Don't be an <laughs> asshole. Don't be an asshole. Yeah, but you know exactly what he was saying, and he was right. If people didn't want to be assholes, would Twitter exist? No. Literally, no. <laughs> there you go. I did you see the tweet that I sent him? No, I didn't. What did you reply with? Uh, here, I can I can pull it up here. I can just go to your profile. Yeah, you'll you'll find it. Like just okay. just find me uh, and my name. I started screaming at him, jokingly, jokingly. Yes, and it was obviously jokingly. And people are retweeting me like, "Look at this obnoxious asshole." You're like, sarcasm, people! And I'm like, okay, you know how people get thrown out of their Twitter account for sending, like, really bad things? Or they, they get their account suspended? I think you should get your account suspended when you are mad about something you have no business being mad about. I really do. I was you joking said. around with a friend! So, in reply to, <laughs> to Scott Wheeler's tweet about the Leafs being knocking on the door to win a cup, yeah, and being a good team, yes. which is all he was saying, which is a factual information. It sure as is. As a divulger of factual information, I can confirm that that is factual information. Yeah. Do, do the Tampa Bay Lightning suck? Answer that question. No, no, they answer don't. Answer that question. Okay, well, there's your answer. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. You said, "Wow, you friggin' dumbass garbage heap does everything gotta be about the Leafs." Take away, take a one way ticket into the sun, you scruffy pigeon farmer. <laughs> I bet you put the milk in before your cereal, then haven't won a playoff series since 2004. 
Feed me your tears. Am I doing this right? Clearly. And you wrote that in all caps. I wrote that in clearly all, sarcasm. In all caps. I called him a <laughs> pigeon farmer. And at the end... A dumbass garbage heap. Dumbass gar- garbage heap <laughs> pigeon farmer. And at the end they said, am I doing this right? Yeah. And someone actually thought it was being serious! Shake your head! And then dunk it in a toilet! Oh my god, everybody! Like, listen, I don't know why I feel the need to so passionately come to his defense over that tweet. Mm-hmm. Where is the lie? The lies and the, the didn't win the first threat. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. There's the truth. All right, I'm done. I'm done. So Mitch Marner came up again this week. <laughs> yeah, well, did. I shouldn't say this week. In between, uh, was Tuesday show? Tuesday show and today's show. Yeah, because we had the the Dregger Cafe. We we well, had that. Dubis dropped a Dregger Cafe reference when he said the Dregger Cafe got kicked back up again when it landed back in North America, which is fine, but there won't be anything coming from us. So okay. that's Dubis talking at the draft combine about the Dregger report that we talked about on Tuesday. That I am not at. That's you are you are sitting right here, so you yes, you are not at the draft call. I was supposed to be, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, do you have any thoughts on Dubas' response to Dreger's report that Mitch Marner wants eight hundred thousand billion dollars? Yeah, it's a great little jab. Yeah, great little jab. And but I I sort of went off. Well, I sort of went off last show, but I'll I I did it again a little bit on Twitter. What okay in Dreger's report mm-hmm. about Marner. Which wasn't even a report, it was just a couple of tweets and a radio hit. Exactly. What news broke? Exactly. None. Yeah. None. And the one someone responded, well, no, he that, that July first thing is news. The Marner uh going beyond July first mm-hmm. is news. I could have figured that out for myself. Like it's a free agent negotiation. July first is an important date. Mm-hmm. And yeah. There's a chance it'll go beyond July 1st. Like, the fact that it was even said out loud, I, I didn't even blink. No, you don't, you know, that doesn't stand out to you. Be like, oh, I need to go report this or tweet this or react on this. No, it's like, yeah, no, that's information. Uh, there will be trades at the draft. I assume, <laughs> uh, I assume teams will make moves. Mm hmm. You know? Why don't I write a report on that? Teams will be looking to make moves. <laughs> uh, this uh, negotiation could go past July 1st. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. It could go before that also. Oh, we could. Could go <laughs> Could go as, as late as July 13th. <laughs> so, Specifically. That'd be great. Is if they start reporting things that are, like, upsettingly off. <laughs> like, just a little bit. Just, like, like, out of nowhere. Yeah, July... 12th. What? No Why? deal will be made at 6 p.m. or later. If a deal falls on any day, it'll be before the 6 p.m. mark. June 28th is going to be big, guys. <laughs> June, what? Why is June 28th? What was what, happening June 28th? What, what was happening? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I just, it's not, and it was the number one freaking story here. Oh, it yeah. It might even be the story that Stephen A. Smith was referring to. Yeah. Because <laughs> that would have been, been talking about Stephen A. Smith's clip would have been from I don't think it was the morning of the NBA. I think it was the day before, so it would have been Wednesday. Uh, the day before the media day. I yeah, think. I think it was the same day as media day, which was Thursday. Okay, which was yesterday. Okay, no, right? Uh, when were you at media what day? What day is today? Today's uh, Friday. Thursday was game one. Wednesday media day was, was Wednesday. Day. Yeah, I think it was that clip was recorded on Wednesday. I'm pretty okay. sure. So, anyways, yeah, that might have been the story that led the news. I think it was. <laughs> That's insane. I genuinely think it was. It's not news. It's no, it's not it's not news and it's not interesting enough mm-hmm. to warrant putting before the Raptors. It's not. And like listen, he might have been for all we know, like we're just taking Stephen A. Smith's word for it. For all we know, he turned on the TV and was just like, Hockey <laughs> Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, it could have been, like, could the have third been the or fourth story. Right. We don't know. Yeah, right. It could have just been Sportsnet rerunning a game at, like, 3 p.m. It was like, that's not primetime hours. But. He also says hockey like an American who doesn't like hockey. Hockey. He also says Maple Leafs. Maple. That was the most surprising part of that clip. That he said that he knows Leafs. who the Maple Leafs are. 
Yeah, and yeah it's kind of no, cool. No one really calls them the Maple Leafs, but yeah, no, that that to me was the most surprising part that he even knew who they are. It's yeah, but it's not news. Zaitsev asking for a trade? Legitimate news. Legitimate news. The problem is it's Zaitsev. Mm-hmm. Marlo, what? That's sort of interesting. Although that's not legitimate news. That is no. It's not news. It's a report. And there's a difference. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. I'll give you that. News is. This happened, mm-hmm. and you can you, you can see a report on the news. Yes. Okay. But okay. to me, it's not. We're splitting hairs. Necessarily. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're yeah, really yeah. splitting hairs. Um, Everything should be read. The first, second, and third story of every sports broadcast should be raptures. One thing, because <laughs> the things that you referenced as reports and news, they all came from sources that we trust to report. Okay. News and reports. What, Friedman. LeBron? Oh. Mackenzie, LeBron. Yes. Are we circling back to this just being Darren Ferris pumping his agenda to the media? With, with Marner? With Marner. Yeah. I mean, well, and again, like, no new quotes have come out since right. the last show. It's just so painfully transparent that that's what this is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel bad because Dreger is self-aware. Sure. Oh, he, he knows. He, he said it on a radio hit. He knows. I just feel like he's... It's always sort of him at the center of this, getting nailed for it. And I remember he, a bunch of players got in his face. Well, it got in his face. They tweeted at him uh, <laughs> during the lockout, 2012 13 lockout, because it seemed fairly apparent that his sources were like league leaning sources. Right? So a, a bunch of players got in his face. I can't remember who they are. Hmm. Uh, I can't remember who they were. But it was more than one, and they were not happy with him. One last piece of Leafs news okay. before we move on. We've almost it's been a it was a wild like three days in Leafland. Oh, we forgot. Yep, I so know where you're going. This is. <sighs> I wish I had like sad music to play. Like I will remember you. Will you remember me? We're gonna do the whole song. It's gonna be great. Don't, Don't let your love pass you by. The Dallas Star. Star. Minnesota, you ruined oh, it. Oh, fuck. You ruined it. Damn it. I said you Dallas. ruined it. <laughs> no. Shit. So Federer Gordiz writes with traded. The green team. <laughs> We're the one that matters. We're traded to the Minnesota oh, Wild. Oh. oh, gosh. Fucked it up. Now we got to start again. There. I will. Sorry. Okay. So Federer Gordiz. Traded to Leafs the Minnesota Pros- Wild. Who's he playing for in the? Guelph Storm. Guelph Storm. They, which won... Uh, they won they the win? OHL championship. Yes, and, and then went to the Memorial Cup. Lost, and lost. In the first round. Of the Memorial Cup. Although they are juiced, stacked that team. So the Leafs get a conditional seventh round selection in the 2020 draft for the signing rights to Fedor Gordiev. And so, it is now confirmed. So they get that. Yeah. So okay, I it, missed that. I, it was you know why? Because he the uh, Chris Johnston sent out the tweet that he signed with Minnesota yeah. at like tip off. Oh, well, thanks, so Chris. No one, <laughs> no one saw it. A bunch of you nine just found out. Nine o'clock last night, he tweets that. Something like that, yeah. Like a bunch of you listening right now just found out because you had never heard. Oh, gosh. Okay, yeah, I didn't know. So the Leafs get, you know what's funny? I noticed it wasn't on Cap Friendly. Oh. Uh. And I, because Cap Friendly, I think, was watching the game. Well, everyone should have been. <laughs> yes. You, sh- <laughs> you shouldn't be looking for Federer Gordiev news. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Hundred percent. Poor, poor CJ. Oh yeah. I that, wonder if he felt silly. Just, just bad timing. Mm, oh well. <laughs> He's like, I can't not send it out. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, so the Leafs get a seventh rounder in twenty twenty. What do you think? Signing rights to Federighi. Um, it's good and it's bad. Yeah. So, a lot of people were equating it to. Can I use washing money to do this? Uh, sure. All right. Yeah, I'll do that. So a lot of people were. <laughs> This, this is going to be a challenge. This is going to be weird. This, this is going to be fun. Um, a lot of people were equating this to the uh, Nolan VC trade with the Edmonton Oilers. Um, and I think that was, it was either conditional sixth or seventh, probably seventh, um, goes to the Leafs in exchange for Nolan VC. Um, the thing was, the Leafs were never going to do anything with Nolan VC. And also, he wasn't a very 
he's not a great player. Like this past season, I think there might have been injuries involved, but he played 17 games in the American Hockey League, had three assists and no goals. That's not the worst, I guess, for most prospects, you know, if you're just playing your first games of professional hockey. This guy's 24, so that's a big difference. Fedor Gurdiv, uh, to me, is a little bit different. So, yes, it's still good that the Leafs uh, weren't going to sign this guy. I don't know if that was the Leafs' decision or his decision. Either way, he was going to go back into the draft. So if Minnesota wanted, they could have just drafted him. They could have even used a seventh rounder, but obviously they didn't feel safe doing that. They like this player good enough. Hi, Jesse. Welcome back. Hi. Uh, they they like Gordiev enough that they that the Wild didn't feel safe just letting him go back into the draft. So they wanted to go out and get him, and they got him, and they signed him to a contract that day. The, so it's good that the Leafs recoup something. What makes me feel nervous uh, is like Gordiev. I think could actually bite them. I think, I think the odds of it are long. I don't think it's likely to happen. But this isn't the same as the Leafs getting a pick for the signing rights to Nolan VC. Um, Gordiev is huge. He knows how to use his size. He's got a little bit of skill. With the proper development, he could end up being a monster. I just think it's unlikely. So, Jesse, I know that you missed it. The the bad. Is that Gordiev may end up being very good, okay. even though it's rather unlikely. The good is the Leafs were never going to use this guy, whether it was their decision or his. So they got a pick for him, and that's great. So, okay, if he's <laughs> going to be good, why didn't they stick with him? They don't well, want to use. Don't, the... I don't think they think he's going to be good. Okay, and they don't want to use the roster spot. Right, but Minnesota thinks he's going to be really good because okay. it wasn't like Nolan VC who the Leafs, his rights would have just expired. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like Zach Hyman, where his rights would have just expired with the Panthers. Gordiev would have gone back into the draft. Yeah, so anybody could have got him. Including Minnesota. Yeah, but they wanted to guarantee that they'll get him. If they were going to spend a draft pick on him anyways, why not just spend the draft pick now and just do it? Yes. Okay. Exactly. And it was next year. Yeah. Too. So. Yeah, yeah. um, not even this year, yeah. But, man, I think I said it last show. I'll say it again. Minnesota has been going nuts since Paul Fenton came on board. Do you think they're going to be good? The Leafs should be calling them every day. Oh. Every day. Well, and think of the little asset management things that the Leafs have done. Like, Mm -hmm. when we talk about these two trades, let's say they turn out the exact same, where the Leafs get a pick for someone who doesn't end up really doing anything. Called it Peter Shirelli, and they're like, "Thanks for the free pick." <laughs> and they called up the Wild, and they said, "Thanks for the free pick." Uh-huh. I don't think you're going to win the Stanley Cup stockpiling seventh rounders, but it should be an indicator that the Leafs are interested in doing business with the Minnesota Wild, which is a team I want them to be interested in doing business with. You know what I always used to do in uh, NHL? What? When I played be a GM mode. What was that? Whenever I would trade like, okay, I'd make a trade like this, where I trade somebody for a seventh. And then I'd trade a sixth and a seventh for a fifth. And then I'd trade like a fifth yeah. and a sixth for a fourth. You'd, you'd turn a paper clip into a house. Two fourths for a third. <laughs> and then a third and a fourth and maybe like a seventh for a second. And then I have two seconds. What? And I package those two seconds with some guy. And then I have another first. And then I end up with two firsts. And then you have no team. But <laughs> I have a first-round draft pick, plus my first-round draft pick that I held on to the entire time. Mm. So I think the Leafs should take my strategy from NHL be a GM mode. Kyle Dubas should buy a house. And just keep stacking up the bricks. And eventually, if you stack enough bricks, you get a house. And when this team is eventually not as good, and when you need some prospects, they'll be there. Which is never going to happen. It's never going to happen because we're going to win a championship, and then who cares if the team is good? And they're going to, yep, stockpile picks, and it's going to be great. <laughs> um, it's not updated on the Cap Friendly page last I checked, no. but they should have four seventh-rounders in 2020. Really? Yeah. I don't even remember it who they are. It currently says they have four. Oh, they it have does, so they updated it. Toronto's, Edmonton's conditionally, yeah. uh, San Jose, and Winnipeg. I don't even remember what the San Jose one was for. That was Eric acquired. Fair? No. 
February 2018. So that is Eric Fair. Congratulations. What? Congratulations. They got a pick for him? And they got a seventh round pick. Hey. Yeah, all keep, right. keep stockpiling. There you go. Yeah. It yeah. I, I wish Federer could be good luck. Oh, so that'll make it seven. Or five. What do you mean? Five, seven, uh seventh round draft picks in twenty twenty. Because they currently have four. Wait, say them again. The Leafs? So the Leafs have their own. Their own. Edmonton's. San Jose's. Yeah. Winnipeg's. Wait, why do they have Winnipeg's? Oh, no, that's why. Oh, it's that's Winnipeg's the Minnesota one. Okay. Was I was traded. To, <laughs> I was about to freak out. Uh, yeah, I was like, wait a so, yeah. Five seventh rounders. <laughs> They're drafting the entire seventh round. Maybe even like one sixth of the seventh round. Right? So, yeah, that's uh, that's the seventh they got from Minnesota. Winnipeg's. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's, um, nothing. I, it's just one of those trades that I, I think we always talk about how Kapanen has that special something about him mm-hmm. where, okay, despite all the flaws in his game, he's one of the fastest players in the league. Federer Gadeev is probably not going to make it. But if he does, he's six be foot special. seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? It's it's a, something that the league does not have an abundance anymore. We touched on this briefly earlier, but you were at NBA Finals Media Day oh my God. on Wednesday, which yes. is crazy. It's so silly. It's, how was it? You talk to Brendan Shanahan, you can get to that after you talk about Guillermo <laughs> and the international media that was there and seeing Steph Curry hit a half-court shot in practice because he knows everybody's watching. And he's like, I'm going to just do this. Oh, Back-to-back back half-court shots. How was it? Um, it's the biggest circus I've ever seen. And what was funny is th- there was a little debate between all the Canadian media there, Toronto-based media there. Um, if the Leafs win... Or, sorry, if the Leafs make it to the Stanley Cup final, think of how much bigger it'll be. It will not be. No. It will not be nearly as big. Hockey as is not as big. This is the... It's the most eyes that have ever been on Toronto for a sports event. Yeah. Oh, my God. Ever. Easily. Ever. Uh, maybe World Series. The, no, That's there it. wasn't enough... There wasn't as much media back then. Because it was back then. Yeah. Right? There it's, were a lot of newspaper n- folks there. 1994. The most, easily the most cameras I've ever <laughs> or seen. Or 93, sorry. I've covered the World Juniors... Which are, man, a lot of people go to the World Juniors. Um, and because you don't realize, like, it's a huge event. It was a huge event in Canada. It's died down a little bit. But this, this was years ago, like, coming off of five straight and all that. But, like, it's also one of the biggest sporting events in, like, I don't know, Slovakia or Kazakhstan. Or, you know, and there's going to be at least two or three Russian media outlets. So I've been to the World Juniors. That was a circus. I've done the Olympics, but I didn't really get to do any of the, like, press row you stuff. Weren't, you weren't at this position that you're at now where no. you'd be a member of the media. It was different. I was yeah. there with Nike. So right. it was all... Sponsor stuff. Sponsor stuff, set up stuff, like we're out on the street, we're on a closed right. set or whatever like but that. But that would... Uh, that's so it's not, it's not the biggest media event ever in Canada. I'd argue that's probably Vancouver 2010. Well, no, though. So Vancouver 2010 was for, that's for dozens of events, right? Oh, okay. This was, so you're probably right. There was obviously, I would assume there was more media at the Olympics sure. in 2010 <laughs> uh, just gathered in that city. Mm-hmm. But for one event, I've never, never, mm-hmm. never, never seen anything uh, like what I saw for Media Day for the Raptors. There was, I was doing a hit. And uh, there were these two guys who wouldn't walk by me because I was obviously on camera. They didn't oh, want to interrupt. Yeah. And then I dropped, you know, my mic to, like, my side because I was done. I was, And they were still just staring at me. And the reason they were just staring at me is because they didn't know I was done because they were from the Mexican uh, oh, broadcast. No <laughs> yeah. So, And there were, there were uh, lots of South American, mm-hmm. I noticed. Uh, there were some... Uh, there was some European, and there was an Australian outlet that was there talking to Andrew Bogut, who got him yeah. right before I did, for five seconds. Did you, <laughs> um, did you see Max Kellerman? I did not see Max Kellerman. Did I didn't see, see any of the guys I, I wished I had saw, like no. Shaq, or like I wanted to grab Shaq so bad, or Charles mm-hmm. Barkley, Stephen A. Smith, uh, and obviously Max Kellerman, just to do a face <laughs> with him. I just, <laughs> yeah, just to, just to say hello. What do you think about the Leafs? 
What do you think? Okay, I had a few video ideas, mm -hmm. and I wanted to avoid hockey as much as possible because I didn't want to be that guy. One of the ideas that was pitched to me was <laughs> do media day in full hockey gear. <laughs> That's a bad idea. And I was like, no, because that is, as a huge hockey fan, I know that maybe the biggest resistance in the city right now is, like, there there is a genuine resistance to hockey. Mm. Because it's, no, please let basketball have its moment. Oh, yeah. And even the most hardcore hockey fans seem to understand, no, this is basketball's moment, leave it alone. Yeah. It's, it's, and I didn't want to be that guy. It would have been funny, yeah. but then, like, I was there to do funny stuff. But then I'm looking at, like, Guillermo trying to serve maple syrup shots to OG Ananobi and Norman Powell, and I'm like, okay, am I that, though? Am I stunt boy? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be stunt boy. Because then it's, then it's the shtick. Yeah, then it's cool no... if he does it. It's Guillermo. Yeah, it's Guillermo can do that Jimmy Kimmel. He should be the weird dude doing the weird stuff. Yes, and also it's stuff. like his eighth NBA Finals media day. A ninth Super Bowl. Yes. 14th World Series. Like, he's, he's been around the block. <laughs> and, like, oh, my God, this was another thing. Just the sheer amount of people. It wasn't just the cameras and the producers and everyone. The handlers from the league were there. Mm -hmm. Handlers from the Raptors were there. Handlers from the Golden State Warriors were there. Um, see Adam Silver? There were different brands. I did not see Adam Silver. Okay. But uh, there were uh, Guillermo was there as a reporter, and he had handlers. The Jimmy <laughs> Kimmel team was like six or seven people. Wow. And if you wanted a piece of them, you had to ask. Wow, and I, I couldn't get him. There was there was another guy who, who I, did you get? There was a guy I almost what was this, Brian. There's a basketball commentator who used to play for the Celtics. He's a giant ginger guy. Brian Windhorst? No, he didn't play he's got for an the... Italian name, something Ellie, Spin, not Spinelli, but that's Scalabrini. What's Brian Scalabrini. Scalabrini. Yeah, Brian Scalabrini yeah. said he would, but then he got caught up. He was talking to Looney from uh, from Golden State. Uh, who did I get? There's a video going up today. I got Patrick McCaw. I got Fred Van Vliet. Oh, really? That's I got, cool. yeah, I was pretty happy with Fred Van yeah, Vliet. Yeah. He was the only, like, regular I got. Uh, well, I guess McCaw is. He just hasn't played. No, he's, been injured. he's not really a regular. And uh, Chris <laughs> Boucher. I got nice. And Andrew Bogut. Okay. So I, I spoke to four basketball players. That was it. <laughs> it was bananas. That's I mean, crazy. Uh, it was so hard to get a word in edgewise. And so we had this funny idea where I was, I'll, I'll just blow the bit. So my wife... <laughs> Mrs. Dangle, she's a kindergarten teacher, and she, unbeknownst to me, had all her students draw pictures and write letters to the Raptors. Aww. And right before I'm, uh, I think it was before I was leaving to come do our last show, she, uh, we were having like a prep meeting for the next day, for media day, and okay, what are we going to do? And uh, my wife... Yeah, she goes, uh, what, what's the best way to get these letters to the Raptors? Should I mail it to Scotiabank Arena, or should I send it to the practice facility? And then it dawned on me, I'm like, can you bring them home tonight and I'll hand them to the Raptors tomorrow? <laughs> that's funny. So that's what we did. But So my first guy is Patrick McCaw, mm -hmm. and I know I need to be aggressive and get in there because there's like 30 people wow. surrounding each guy, and we're talking bench guys. Like, we're, we're talking... The, the the Kawhi Leonard's, Kyle Lowry, Steph Curry's, they all they had um they were inside in podium? front of all the cameras. Yeah, they're doing like a podium hit. Right. Yeah, so yeah. they were inside. Then there were other guys who were on the court. Like Jeremy Lin, who's popular but like doesn't really play. Yeah. So he was on the court. He oh my god, he had like thirty people around him. Everyone had like thirty people. It was insane. <laughs> I was part of a scrum, the scrum for F Fred Van Vliet, I was one of I want to say four Sportsnet mics. Wow. <laughs> There's four different people from one network trying to get a word from Fred Van Vliet. And there was, um, what's it, is it Nikki Reyes? There was someone from Sportsnet yeah. holding a Sportsnet mic who like, I hadn't even met before in the scrum. <laughs> that's that's how vast it was. But anyway, yeah. so I got to be aggressive to, to get in there to ask questions. But mm -hmm. I, I'm going to wait a bit because I want people to ask their serious questions first before I go, here's a drawing from a five-year-old. Okay. So are you holding, I'm just trying to picture this, you're holding a bunch of letters from yes. kindergartners yes. in your hand while you're trying to get a mic to Fred Van Vliet. Yes. <laughs> well, my first guy was Patrick McCaw. Patrick McCaw. Right. So I go, I go, okay, I'm going to let them ask five or six serious questions. Um, 
And then I don't know. I got to jump in because I got I got to go here. I got to go there. But I can barely hear what Patrick McCaw is saying because I'm I'm also so far back in the pack. Mm-hmm. And then I so I, I I listen. I go okay. I should at least hear what he's talking about before I just barge in. And all I hear is so how serious was your injury? Were you were you ever worried that you would never play basketball again? He goes oh I was worried I would never walk again. <laughs> I'm like oh <laughs> Jesus. Like, so, okay, so I'm in a hard left turn this conversation. <laughs> so I waited and uh yeah, I got I got four guys and it took like an hour to get literally 15 seconds so, with four guys and and that was it because everyone did, else was gone. What did Patrick McCaw say when you gave him the letter? He liked it. Fred Van Vliet was very over it. Oh, uh Chris yeah. Boucher was cool. Well, Fred Van Vliet So I I I cut someone off hard for Fred Van Vliet oh, because no. the PR person said last question. Okay. And I had not asked my thing yet. And so I'm like, "Oh boy, that's bad." So she says last question. The guy who asked the last question tries to ask another question after that. Nope. And so I just no matter how much he was talking, I was like, "I'm just going to talk right over it." Like I even boxed him out and everything. It was great. I set up a screen. Who's uh, the, do you know the guy? No, I don't know the guy. And it didn't you know matter because it was, was from? nothing personal. It was just too bad. I'm getting this. Yeah, yeah. not you. So uh, <laughs> you already got yours. Goodbye. I I've never seen that Steve before. An aggressive I don't Steve like who's it. willing to take a stance on something. I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not good at it at all. That's, That's why funny. I only got four guys. Yeah. Um. But uh. I'm just like, this is the same guy who paid a dollar to the car dealership after he I said he wouldn't? I don't. No, I, so I, I can't be that guy. I don't know how to do it. Arash mm-hmm. Madani knows how to do it oh, yeah. with charm. That's a vet. That guy sneaks into a scrum late, gets a question after only being there 30 seconds, and is gone. And wow. He's off to the next one. He's so good, and he does it with a smile on his face and charm. I don't know how to do that. So, But I start with... Not a question. I just wanted to hand you some words of encouragement from a student in Ajax, and Fred is just like, for real? Like, all right, thanks. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, you just don't want to be doing that. It's, it's the one thing basketball players and hockey players and soccer players, baseball players all have in common is I'd rather be playing than have a mic stuck in my face. Sure. You know what I mean? No, and he had – sorry, this is – I should throw this down before anyone thinks Fred Van Vliet was being an asshole. Mm-hmm. Um scrums for hockey like the long ones i've seen i've seen like at um there was the the day where all the players get their rookie cards taken but it's mm-hmm. also treated as something bigger and the media shows up i can't remember exactly what it's called okay. but i was there for like the connor mcdavid uh the jack eichel like it was a, it was a big one and those were like 8 minutes oh. which are really long mm-hmm. to me or it's a lot longer than that's it used how to. long they're in the scrum Yes. Yeah, that's a long time. Chris be. Boucher, who, how many games did he even play for the Raptors this year and how many minutes? Like less than a handful. He yeah. came like halfway through the season, he got called up. Yeah. He was talking to people in multiple languages for like 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, Montreal native. Yeah. Talk French, yeah. Yeah, and Patrick <laughs> McCaw was talking, like every single person that came out talked for at least 15, 20 minutes. Wow. Abaka does the, uh, he does four languages. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's insane. That's crazy. <laughs> So I have no idea how the kindergartner video is going to turn out. That was supposed to okay. be like our big one, yeah. and then we left going. This I don't know. I don't, I don't know what we're we going to be able something. to salvage. I'm interested in what Drew is going to be able to salvage. When does that go up? It should be today. today. The I whole all four guys. Uh, yes. Okay. And then oh yeah, and then so, I, you know, I sort of slump off the court, and I'm not so, feeling very good about what I've been able to accomplish. This is so far. the main event. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't feel very good about what I've accomplished so far. And I just walked down the tunnel that you always see Drake walking down. Mm-hmm. And there at the end of the tunnel, wearing jeans, Brendan Shanahan. Amazing. Just completely random, talking to someone, and he's finishing up his conversation. He's about to go. And I go, nope, not today. And I go, Shanny. And he turns around, and he, he like literally goes, oh. <laughs> Does he say Steve or anything? Like, almost like, oh, sh- oh shit, I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> Like, I don't think anyone had spoken to him. I no, might well, the he's only not, person. He's not there to do media. No. Like, no, he was he's probably, just in the he building because he, that's his, that's he's his like office. Grabbing, yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot my phone charger. Yeah. <laughs> and then the he's sc- like, oh, fuck, the media found me. Steve found me. It, oh, oh, geez, whatever. Okay, <laughs> Damn fine. it. And then, I, so I got like two minutes with Brandon Chan. It's a solid two minutes. I thought it was really good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He was a good sport about it, obviously. Yeah, that video huge. went up yesterday. 
Yes, that yeah. went up yesterday. It's on your. It's on Sportsnet's Twitter. Sportsnet's there's YouTube a clip, channel. Uh, yeah, there's clip a, on their there's Twitter, a clip. and then the full things on their YouTube channel where yep. you can see it. Yeah. Um, and there's also like a behind the scenes sort of fish out of water video for all of Media Day. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was good. I probably I'm curious to see how the kindergartners video turns out because okay. I would have shoved that into the fish out of water video. Uh you just made a one because you don't think there's enough. I don't know. Well, Drew Livingstone from Sportsnet. Producer Drew, he is brilliant. I'm right. curious to see what he does. Um, there was there was some very nice words of advice at the end of the Brendan Shanahan video. Yes. Where he says, because you ask him about, it's not like trolls, but like all the noise going on. You ask him about that and he says, I hear it, I just don't react. And I thought it was beautiful. It was beautiful because well, I was apologizing for, what I basically said was, listen, I yell and scream about you all the time and I'm not going to stop doing that. <laughs> but also I'm sorry. Yes. Which is, that's an awkward conversation to have with someone. You can't have was, that with very many people. It was very honest. What? It was, I, it was a moment of endearment for you and like you a think? moment of truth for Shani. And yeah. he said the perfect thing. I just, uh, I don't react. <laughs> I, I hear it. The, all right, Steve. And uh, I don't react. The sort of guy <laughs> who would listen to me scream in his face. And I've heard multiple stories of... I, he's told people in the past, like, hey, tell me what you really think. And they're like, are you serious? Hmm. Sh- scream in his face. And he goes, oh, well, you know, that's very interesting. He's the guy. I, I, I was endeared to Brendan Shanahan before he even became Leeds president when he was um, Department of Player Safety. Mm-hmm. So he suspended someone on the Rangers. I don't remember who it was. It was obviously controversial, I guess. So this guy brought a sign to the game that said, hey, Shanahan, you suck. Or something like that. And Shanahan found him and like t- took a picture with him. <laughs> it's a great photo. Um, we have two we have two serious pieces of news to end on. Oh, okay. Not serious. I see the look on your face. They're not serious. They're, uh, they're, they're okay. Oh, are they? Well, yeah. Okay. They're, they're hockey news things that I think we should hit on okay. before we go. We're running out of time here. Interesting. Uh, Mr. Evgeny Kuznetsov. Oh. <laughs> On Monday, on Monday, a viral video uh, video went viral showing Evgeny Kuznetsov at the, uh, I guess at the end of the cup run when they're all celebrating. He's in a hotel. That he's in a hotel. There's a two lines of a power, powdery white substance that a lot of people speculated was cocaine. He's. I mean, the we. I, I'm not trying to get sued here, Steve. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people speculate it's it's. Drugs, mm. the dirty drugs, the big I- D. Illegal. The illegal drugs. So the NHL released a statement today after that video went viral, and their statement says, so my webpage lows, we have thoroughly reviewed the situation surrounding the video circulated on the internet this past Monday, May 27th, involving Capitals player Evgeny Kuznetsov. Our review included, among other fact-finding steps, an in-person interview with Mr. Kuznetsov. While we certainly do not condone or endorse some of the decisions he made on the night in question, Mr. Kuznetsov's accounts of the events that transpired aligns with other information we have been able to gather, and we have found no basis to question his representations with respect to what did and what did not occur. We consider the matter formally closed. Can you read the second last sentence again? All right. We have found no basis to question his representations with respect to what did and what did not occur. How on earth are you going to prove that he did this thing? That all he literally has to say is, I did not do this. Exactly. And where are you? how are you going to find year-old evidence from that? Now, that's not me saying he did it or didn't. It's just me going, this was always going to be the conclusion because how on earth? If people made this giant deal of a thing that couldn't be, he couldn't be punished for. Because well, you, can't, you can't prove something when there's no evidence of it. Right? Yeah. I, I don't know. I also think hockey fans didn't really overreact to it that mm. much. Because it is a very wide out, in the open secret that, listen, despite the fact that Evgeny Kuznetsov does not do it, (laughs) um, a lot of hockey players do. It's an underlying secret that, that's an open secret. Underlining? 
underlining. Mm. <laughs> mm. I think with that, if there's a percentage of the society that does drugs, then that percentage will also include hockey players and athletes because that's how things work. Yeah, I don't know. in life. So that matters. Closed according to the NHL. Don't do drugs, don't kids. Do drugs. Don't do coke. The other piece of news was the NWHL made more news this week. Uh, that's right. The National Women's Hockey League is canceling plans to add a pair of Canadian teams for the 1920 season for now, making it clear it is open to doing what's best for women's hockey. In a post on their website, the NWHL says, we'll always do what's best for the game. If any individuals or groups come forward and declare they are ready to start and invest in a new league where women can receive a substantial full-time salary and medical insurance, we would be ecstatic to have a conversation about a partnership or passing the torch. Is that a, hey, NHL, please start your women's league. Yeah. We just want to give you this. Yeah, we want you to buy this. <laughs> yeah. We don't want you to give it. No, this is, it's a survival year for the mm-hmm. NWHL. It is not an expand year. It, this is not a go out into the world and conquer year. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a substantial announcement, but it's also, again... Yeah, I could have figured that out for myself. What would have been a more substantial announcement is, screw you, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> that yeah. would have surprised me, but um, they're obviously not stupid. So, there it's, go. boy, it's fascinating to see what they do. Because, yeah, if they just wait it out, and they survive, and they force people to buy their franchises, or partner with them, or mm-hmm. whatever, force whoever's next, come on, it's the NHL, let's be honest, Hopefully. Force whoever's next to, you know, buy something from them in some sort of way. Could be good. What do you think of uh, Robert Pattinson as Batman? (laughs) Um, Uh, Warner Brothers has confirmed that Robert Pattinson is Batman. Listen, (laughs) he was the only person to beat Harry Potter at Quidditch. What does that mean? It means he was the only person who ever beat Harry Potter at Quidditch, and he deserved better. Robert, what is... Uh, he he, he in, was Cedric Diggory in the movies. Robert Pattinson was in Harry Potter? Wasn't he? I don't know. Look He's up. the guy from Twilight. Yeah, I know. He was in Harry Potter as well? Yeah. I've never seen the Harry the pale Potter. pale guy with the funny shaped head? I've never seen the Harry Potters. Yeah. It, he was... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Now See, you got me doubting it. I'm <laughs> I, pretty sure I, he was Cedric Diggory. I wouldn't know. I've never seen them. You All haven't right. seen the movies? They're no, not as good. I've seen like the first one. And I don't well, that was bad. I'm going to get punched in the head for that. It was also designed for children, and as an adult, I could not enjoy it. Because Harry Potter started as a children's movie franchise, and then it evolved into a mega franchise where it's supposed to appeal to everyone. Now you're going to get yelled at because (laughs) it started as a book. Well, I mean the movie franchises. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Well, And it's supposed to age with the audience, which the books do wonderfully. Mm. And the movies, they get better as it goes on, too. But that's just technology and stuff. Also, the actors were no longer 11. We've come to the end of the children's table. I had fun. I had fun, too. Do we leave anything out? Sure hope not. Maybe. Uh, can you think of anything? Uh, I feel like I should constantly promote the, uh, the book tour. Oh, yeah. Do that. Uh, here, let me get my phone real quick. <laughs> All right. Do that. Promote the book tour. And then we will leave on what you think is going to happen in game number two of the NBA Finals. Uh, one that I really want... Uh, to get out there, is Vancouver. It is happening. Officially, it is happening. Um, It's going to be ticketed. Uh, We're just figuring out how we're going to do that, and as soon as we have a link, I'll obviously throw that out there. But uh, (laughs) the sign that we have not released it, beer and books available for sale. Uh, I'm going to be at the Regal Beagle, June 22nd, at 4 p.m., so that'll be after the draft. Um, Regal Beagle, which is 2283 West Broadway uh, in Vancouver. June 22nd, 4 p.m. So the plan is basically the event will be 4 to 6 officially, but like if there's still people, I'm obviously going to stick around. Check and there around. will be beer and food, so I don't plan on leaving that place for at least several hours. So what days are you going to be in Vancouver? Like what are... Uh... I assume that week that we can get in one podcast, or like how long are you going to be out there? Oh, no, I think I'm only going to be out there 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Oh, three days in Vancouver, yeah. and that's it. Well, okay, and it's wow. not even really going to be three. I'm going to arrive partway through day one of the draft and then yeah. leave 
Um, because it's expensive. Okay. Um, yeah. Should we troll Adam in any way? We've reached the end of the show. Is this the one time we... We let him be. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here. Other book signing dates. Oh, yes. Do those. I've done a Sorry. very poor job of promoting these. <laughs> Um, because I've been trying to arrange more. Yeah, well, read that as I've been stretching myself too thin. Uh, the Burger Fest. That is June, well, it's June 14th, 15th, 16th, but I'm going to be there in Vaughn, Vaughan, um, June 15th. I want to say that's at four. I'll double check the time, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to sign books for all the Vaughn peeps who are going to be there. Uh, Saturday, June 8th from one to three, I'm going to be in Bradford. And that is 33 Holland Street East, Bradford, Ontario. It's at Experience Toys and Games. Um, oh, we got a show coming up uh, in Scarborough. Uh-huh. On okay. the 14th? Yeah, so I think you were in the bathroom last time when we were talking about this. <laughs> okay. So I am i don't feel comfortable calling it a live podcast. No. but we, it's not. It is going to be a live show, though, that we're doing. <laughs> if we want. We can just do a we can do a little thing and then maybe like a Q and A. I don't know. I want to do a Q and A. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, Adam might. I assume he should not be there. I assume he won't be there because yeah. of my baby. Last day, last <laughs> show, he said he might show up. I don't think he's going. No, 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 no. I d- I don't expect him to be there. No. But it's going to be us. Yeah. That's going to be at the end. We'll be there at Kennedy Commons. I will make it out to that. Hopefully. Yeah. We'll see. See um, how I feel that morning. <laughs> and we're we're Just working kidding. we're working on another um, Indigo in Toronto, mm-hmm. and that is going to be in part because of your girlfriend. <laughs> really? Actually, yes. Because of the uh, the book that somebody put the uh, yes. staff's picks on. Yes. Okay. And then they later posted that on their Instagram, and then they reached out to me and said, "Hey, do you want to do a thing here?" Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And also, way, way, way down the line, August twenty second, I'm going to be uh, doing a library in Oshawa, but that's August twenty second. So okay. If you forget, I'll forgive you. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's a lot of stuff. Yes. Also, we never plug our YouTube channel. If you listen to the show, you can also watch it. If Subscribe. You didn't know. You can hit up our YouTube channel. I think if you just type in youtube.com slash Steve Dango Podcast, you'll find it. Mm-hmm. And then you can watch the show if you prefer to watch. We are, if you listen on iTunes, we are also available on Spotify. If you've never listened to us on Spotify, that's an option. Are we still on Google uh, Play? We are also on Google Play Music and SoundCloud. So yes. There's many, many places to listen to us. You can follow us on all social medias. We are on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Tumblr. I have a Tumblr. Uh, Steve has a Tumblr. Yeah. I also send carrier pigeon letters to anybody who requests. If you'd like one, I will send out my pigeons. Yeah. You pigeon farmer. (laughs) And subscribe to the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. We're going to hit 100,000 subscribers, damn it. One day. We're going to do it. No, now I'm addicted to it. (laughs) Now I'm addicted. You haven't gotten your play button yet. So, funny you should say that. The other day, Uh because I I was worried. I hit 100,000 subscribers like a while ago. On your... LFR channel. Yes. Yes. And I was supposed to get some sort of redemption code in mm-hmm. order to get my little plaque thing, my button. Yeah. And I never got it. Okay. I was uploading, uh, I think it was the most recent cup check video. It's like three in the morning. And as I'm uploading it, I'm like sleepy eyed. I'm, I'm just dying. I see in the back end of my channel, it's like, here's your code. And I go, <gasps> ah, no way. Oh, no so I'll hopefully have that in a couple of weeks. Oh. And I'm going to ho- hoist it above my head like the Stanley Cup. Wow. It's going to be amazing. Way to the show. Congrats, man. Yeah. It's official. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come. It's real. I That's can retire awesome. now. Now what do I do? You quit. All right. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.